Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. It's time for another distribution review. I just love doing these. I love checking out new Linux distributions. And today is especially awesome because we're going to be checking out Pop! OS 2110, which was released on December 14th. I get asked all the time, which distribution is my daily driver? And the answer for several years actually has been Pop! OS. I just love the quality of life improvements that Pop! OS brings to the table. It's definitely a great distribution for your laptop or desktop. And we get to check out the latest release in this video, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Version 2110 of the popular distro features a brand new application library that we'll be checking out shortly. And it's also the first release of the project to be officially supported on the Raspberry Pi. However, we're going to be sticking to the x86 version in today's video. I want to do a dedicated video about the Raspberry Pi version, which I'll upload as soon as it's done. But for right now, let's go ahead and dive into Pop! OS 2110. First, let's take a look at the installation process. I installed Pop! OS 2110 on my Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme, first generation. And from what I can see, the installer has changed very little, if at all, from previous releases. Just like always, to get the process started, you simply boot from a USB flash drive that you've written the installation image to, and then you navigate through the various prompts. The process is super simple, and the install finished very fast for me. In fact, I think it's one of the fastest distribution installers out there. However, the installer could use a few new features. I've always wanted it to give you an option to set the host name for your machine during installation rather than forcing you to do it manually. By default, your machine will have a default hostname of Pop! OS, and if you rename that later, as a lot of people do, it's going to cause two entries to show up in your router or firewall DHCP lease table, rather than just one entry. Now, to be fair, the inability to set the hostname during installation isn't really all that big of a deal, so I'll give it a pass on that for now. One feature that I really would like to see in the installer, however, is an ability to easily dual boot with another operating system. It's not that you can't dual boot Pop! OS, they just don't have an option in the installer at this time to facilitate that process. My understanding is that an option to install alongside your current operating system is on the roadmap, so hopefully we'll see it next time around. Another option I wish was made easier in the installer was facilitating LVM. I'm a big fan of installations using the Logical Volume Manager. It gives you the ability to resize online, for example. And sure, that's not something that everyone will use, but LVM also features things like snapshots as well. So I would like to see that in the installer. Hopefully that's something they can add later. So other than the fact that the installer could use a few more features, it's very fast, it's easy to use, it gets the job done. So overall, I think the installer is a win. After the installation process is complete and you log in for the first time, you are presented with a welcome screen that'll give you a chance to tune some additional settings, such as language options, the dock, light or dark mode, and you can also individually toggle the workspaces and applications buttons as well. So it's pretty neat that they give you the ability to customize these things right from the first login. This welcome screen also gives you an option to log in to a decent selection of online services, so that way you can log into something like your Google account to sync your email and calendar, or even set up your system to be able to log in via Active Directory. Also, you'll see an option to toggle location services as well, so you can feel free to turn that on if you plan on using an application that utilizes location data. For those of you that haven't already used Pop! OS in the past, I'm going to switch gears and give you an overview of some of the features that set it apart from other distributions. Pop! OS, just like many distributions out there, utilizes GNOME to provide the desktop environment. However, there are so many changes and improvements made to the GNOME experience in POP that I no longer feel comfortable calling it GNOME. In order to set it apart from other distributions, System76, the company that makes POP! OS, refers to their implementation of GNOME as the Cosmic Desktop. And Cosmic refers to the customization that System76 has made to GNOME, but is still GNOME under the hood. Among the changes that are made against the default GNOME experience, 
is the fact that we have a panel at the bottom of the screen that shows shortcut icons as well as icons for running applications. And on the top left of the screen, we have a button for workspaces as well as accessing the application library. And the application library is actually a new feature, but we'll get into that in a moment. In addition to tweaking GNOME's layout, they also customized the theme as well. And I think it looks great, especially when you compare it to the default GNOME theme. For example, here's the GNOME desktop running on Fedora. Fedora doesn't change GNOME's theme at all, so what you're seeing here is the GNOME desktop exactly as the developers intended. I don't think it looks completely terrible, but in my opinion, it looks dated and bland. Pop OS, by comparison, is more modern and colorful. There's many other tweaks and adjustments in Pop OS as well. It's really hard to go over every single feature in one video. There's many quality of life improvements, such as the ability to reinstall the entire distro without needing to reach for your installation media. But perhaps my favorite of the Pop specific features is auto tiling, which you can enable by clicking the icon at the top right corner of the screen, this one right here, which ensures that every app that you have open makes efficient use of the available space on your display. Another feature I like a lot is the launcher, which you can access by simply pressing the super key, aka the Windows key. And you could use this launcher to quickly launch apps or even open files. So far, the features that I've been talking about in this section are not actually new to Pop! OS 2110. So what new features can we expect this time around? Well, honestly, not a lot. Pop! OS 2110 has fewer new features this time around than any previous release I can think of. The biggest new feature in this version is the application library, which is brand new to this release. You can access it by clicking on Applications at the top left corner of the screen, and you could also access it by clicking on the grid icon on the panel, or you can even hold Super and press letter A. When you open it, the application library will show you some common applications on the first screen, and you'll see some folders on the bottom of this window. The purpose of the application library is to show you all of the applications that you have installed, and it also gives you the ability to sort applications into folders so you could come up with your own custom layout for your applications if you wish. And just like pretty much everything else in Pop! OS, the application library supports keyboard shortcuts as well. For example, you could press page up or page down to quickly switch between your app folders, which essentially treats them as if they were tabs. So I think this is a feature that quite a few people out there will probably enjoy. However, being able to sort applications into folders isn't exactly new. We've been able to do that in GNOME for quite a while now. But the application library itself is a custom feature for Pop! OS, and it does essentially the same thing as GNOME's application menu, but it's implemented a bit better, in my opinion. I like it overall, but I do have some mixed feelings about it. First, let's compare the application library to how launching applications normally works on the GNOME desktop. In uncustomized GNOME, the application launcher takes up the entire screen. I've always hated this. And GNOME isn't the only user interface that does this. To me, it makes no sense for an operating system to use up the entirety of your monitor to display a list of applications. This is jarring to the user experience because it completely covers up what the person was working on and takes them away from the workflow. With the application library in Pop! OS, it still takes up a sizable amount of space on the screen, but thankfully, not the entire screen. What's strange, though, is that the application library looks like a floating window since it's not visually connected to the button you click on to open it. It literally looks like a separate floating window that you can't minimize or close. But honestly, that's probably a very minor complaint. Now, there's potentially a bit of redundancy with the application library. I mean, the distribution provides us with both a launcher and an application library. When should you use one versus the other? The thing is, both the application launcher and the application library enable you to open applications, so generally they serve the same purpose. But they go about it a bit differently, so I think most people will probably favor one over the other. The launcher, which you can access by clicking on the icon or by pressing super, enables you to launch not only applications, but open files as well. So if you already know the name of the application that you want to launch, the application launcher is probably the best bet. Once you press super, you start typing the name of the application or the file that you want to open, and as you type, it narrows down the list. Once you've narrowed down the list, 
You can select the application or file that you want to open by clicking on it or by using your keyboard. By comparison, the application library doesn't give you the ability to open files. It's only focused on applications. So if you want to see a list of applications that you have installed, the application library is probably the best bet for that. However, in my personal opinion, I think it might make a bit more sense if they consolidated the launcher and the library into the same app. For example, perhaps they could put an icon on the application launcher to access the library. That way, you wouldn't need two icons on your panel that both enable you to launch applications. But that's just a personal opinion. Having multiple ways of launching applications isn't exactly a bad thing. When it comes to performance, Pop! OS is very fast, and I have no complaints about its responsiveness at all. While this distribution wouldn't be a good fit for older computers you might have that have been in storage for over a decade, it runs quite well on modern computers. The goal of Pop! OS is not to revive your old Windows XP computer that has 512 megabytes of RAM. It's a modern desktop that runs quite well on compatible hardware. And speaking of compatibility, I can happily confirm that, yes, installing Steam works just fine. The reason why I bring this up is because a recent video from Linus Tech Tips showed a colossal failure while attempting to install Steam. But there was no issue for me whatsoever. In fact, I've never had an issue installing Steam on any version of Pop! OS. So I can only speculate regarding how Linus ended up in that position. Now, I won't get into that here because my friend Tom and I did an entire video where we talked about that. Definitely check that video out if you haven't already seen it and you would like to see a reaction based on Linus's experiment. Under the hood, Pop! OS 21.10 is built on top of Ubuntu 21.10, which is, as of the time of this recording, the latest Ubuntu base. This means that Pop! OS 21.10 automatically inherits Linux kernel 5.15, as well as everything else that Ubuntu 21.10 has to offer. I mentioned earlier that Pop! OS utilizes GNOME to provide the desktop environment, but to be more specific, Pop! OS 21.10 ships GNOME 40. Unfortunately, that means we're one major version of GNOME behind, so if you want the latest GNOME experience, you won't get that here. And this is not the fault of System76. Ubuntu has dropped the ball on providing the latest GNOME experience for two releases in a row, and Pop! OS just inherits whatever version of GNOME that Ubuntu happens to be shipping at any one time. So since Ubuntu is behind, then unfortunately, Pop! OS is also behind. It would have been great if Pop! OS 21.10 shipped the latest version of GNOME, but then again, GNOME 41 doesn't really have all that many new features that are worth talking about, so it's not that big of a loss. Now, normally when I do my reviews, I would consider out-of-date software to be a negative. However, I no longer consider Pop! OS a GNOME distribution. I mean, sure, that's what it uses under the hood, but they customize GNOME so much that it barely resembles the desktop that it originates from. System76 refers to their interface as the Cosmic Desktop and not GNOME. Cosmic itself isn't considered a separate desktop environment, but instead a customization layer on top of GNOME itself. For that reason, I can't really hold it against this release for having an out-of-date version of GNOME. I mean, there's so many custom tweaks and quality of life improvements in Pop! OS that it may as well be a separate thing altogether. In fact, this might even be the last review of Pop! OS I do where I mention GNOME at all. I guess we'll see. Now, something that might be a little confusing to some users out there is the version number. It's version 2110. But what's the problem with that? Well, the version number actually matches the version of Ubuntu that this particular version is based on, Ubuntu 2110. The first digit represents the year, 2021, and the second digit, the month, October. But it's currently December. So you could consider this version 2112, but that's not what they decided to call it. Now, I do understand that System76 is keeping 2110 in the name because Ubuntu 2110 is what it's based on, so it's not exactly wrong, but it's not exactly right either. It's a little confusing, so if they're going to be a few months late with their release, I do recommend that they change the version number to their own scheme. However, I do appreciate the fact that Pop! OS releases when it's ready, and they don't rush it out the door to meet a specific deadline, unlike Ubuntu. Overall, Pop! OS 21.10 is actually a great release. It doesn't have a ton of new features this time around, but that's actually okay with me. After all, the purpose of a new release of Pop! OS is not necessarily to shower you with new features, but instead to serve as a new starting point that's synchronized to the latest Ubuntu base. 
In fact, the official website is very clear on this. In one of their information pages for Pop! OS, it mentions that feature development in Pop! OS is not exclusive to any particular point release, as we follow a rolling release strategy for updates to projects which we maintain. So what that means is that a new feature released for the most current version of Pop! OS is often backported to the current LTS release as well, which is currently at version 2004. And new features can land at virtually any time. They don't feel the need to withhold new features for the next stable version of the entire distribution. So while we don't have a ton of new features to talk about, at least right now, that doesn't mean that there won't be something exciting to talk about later. For example, at one point in the past, System76 released support for hybrid graphics cards in the middle of a release cycle rather than waiting for the next release. So you never know it might come our way. So even though we don't have a ton of new features here, I have no hesitation whatsoever recommending Pop! OS 2110. If you are currently using 2104, there's simply no reason not to upgrade. If you're just starting out, 2110 features the latest Ubuntu base, so it's compatible with a lot of newer hardware. The quality of life improvements in this distro, as well as its great performance and attention to detail, make it a worthy choice for your computer. Any downsides I noticed here are all personal opinion, and there have been no crashes or performance issues whatsoever during the time that I've spent with this release. So even though there's not a lot of exciting new features to talk about in this release, it was more about refinements all over the place. And yes, we did get the application library, which is pretty cool. But System76 is in a bit of a transition state right now when it comes to this distribution, because they're working on some exciting new technologies, which might even culminate in their own desktop environment. Now, nothing is set in stone right now, but they are experimenting behind the scenes, so there's no telling what might come next. Anyway, I have some awesome content coming very soon, that I can't wait to show you guys, so make sure you are subscribed to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux. Thank you so much for watching.